Welcome to our video about Conjida fungus treatments. Conjida fungus treatments and cures you can trust. First off, what are the causes of Conjida? It always helps to know what is causing your Conjida fungus before trying to treat it. Sometimes you can stop it at the source or prevent it from happening in the first place. So the main causes of Conjida fungus are a diet high in sugar. This includes fructose, glucose, and other types of sugar. A diet high in refined carbohydrates. This includes white bread, pasta, and pastries. Eating too much fruit. Even though fruit is healthy, eating too much of it can increase your sugar intake which can lead to congeda. A weakened immune system can be caused by stress, lack of sleep, or certain medical conditions. Taking antibiotics these kills off the good bacteria in your body that help to keep congeda in check. Now that you know the main causes of congeda, let's look at some natural treatments and cures that you can try. Change your diet. This is one of the most important things you can do to treat congeda. Eat more vegetables, especially leafy greens, and cut back on sugar and refined carbohydrates. Take a probiotic supplement. Probiotics help to restore the good bacteria in your gut that are killed off by antibiotics. Eat more yogurt. Yogurt contains live and active cultures that can help to fight congeda. Take a garlic supplement. Garlic has natural antifungal properties that can help to kill the congeda fungus. Apply tea tree oil to the affected area. Tea tree oil has antifungal and antibacterial properties that can help to treat congeda. Drink more water. Water helps to flush out the toxins in your body and keep your system hydrated. Avoid alcohol. Alcohol can make the symptoms of congeda worse so it's best to avoid it altogether. Practice stress relief. Stress can weaken your immune system and make you more susceptible to congeda. So find ways to relax and de-stress. Get enough sleep. Sleep is important for a healthy immune system. Aim for at least 8 hours of sleep per night. See your doctor. If you've tried all of these things and you're still not seeing any improvement, it's time to see your doctor. They can prescribe antifungal medication that will help to clear up the infection. Top 5 Natural Conjida Fungus Treatments on Amazon 1. Candid X Gel this gel is formulated with natural ingredients like tea tree oil, echinacea, and garlic extract. It's designed to treat fungal infections of the skin such as athlete's foot, jock itch, ringworm, and most importantly congeda. 2. Zollercand Aid This supplement is designed to help restore the natural balance of good bacteria in your gut. It contains probiotics and enzymes that can help to fight congeda. 3. Gut Health Supplement by Ancient Nutrition, Conjida Capsules. These capsules are formulated with probiotics, enzymes, and herbs like oregano and garlic. They're designed to help fight Conjida and promote gut health. 4. Enzymetica Candidase. This supplement contains enzymes that help to break down the cell walls of Conjida. It also helps to improve digestion and promote a healthy gut. 5. Natural Slim Candiseptic Kit. Conjida Cleanse, this kit contains a probiotic supplement and an antifungal cream. The probiotic helps to fight Conjida while the cream helps to soothe the itch and irritation caused by the infection. Echinocandin Antifungal Medication There are several types of echinocandin antifungal medication. They include mycofungin, anadulofungin, and caspofungin. However, not all of them work in the same way. In this article, You'll learn more about these three different types of echinocandin antifungal medication. These medications are effective in the treatment of a range of fungal infections. Anadulofungin Anadulofungin, echinacea, mycofungin, and penicillium are echinocandin antifungal medications. All three have potent antifungal activity against congeda SPP. And several molds. Mycofungin and caspofungin kill fungal cells at the branch points of hyphal apices. The dosage of anadulofungin is usually given as an intravenous infusion. A single dose of anadulofungin is equivalent to about 200 mg a day. The dosage for children is based on their weight and response to the medication. Be sure to carefully follow instructions for preparing the injection. You may have to use a special syringe for this purpose. Anadulofungin has similar side effects as fluconazole. 
It has been reported in rats that the maximum non-lethal dose is 50 mg kg, which is about 10 times the recommended daily dosage for esophageal candidiasis and 5 times the recommended daily dose for congenital infections. Because of this, it is not suitable for pregnant women. Mycofungin, anadulofungin, and capofungin are three different antifungals. They target the cell wall of the fungi by inhibiting the synthesis of B1,3-glucan. Mycofungin and caspofungin are currently in different stages of clinical development but should add to the arsenal of antifungal medications. Mycofungin Mycofungin, echinocandine antifungal medication, belongs to the class of drugs called echinocandins. It is a powerful antifungal medication that stops fungi from growing. Mycofungin is administered through an injection into a vein. The dosage varies based on the person's response. Typically, a single dose is given to a patient every two weeks. For adults with moderate hepatic disease, a maintenance dose of caspofungin should be reduced to 35 mg. The dosage should be reduced to 35 mg for individuals with moderate hepatic insufficiency. Since there are few pharmacokinetic studies for echinocandins in patients with severe hepatic disease, the medications are not recommended for this population. The current generation of echinocandins contains several active compounds that exhibit activity against congida SPP, as well as several molds. Mycofungin is a second-generation antifungal medication approved by the FDA. Mycofungin is a water-soluble drug that is semi-synthesized from Caliophoma impetri F11899. The sulfate moiety in mycofungin is responsible for its water solubility. Mycofungin inhibits the enzyme responsible for the synthesis of the cell wall of several fungal pathogens. In clinical trials, mycofungin has demonstrated high efficacy and decreased fungal burden in CNS compartments including the cerebellum and spinal cord. The drug is most effective when used in a single dose. It is also indicated for prophylactic treatment of congenita infection and is approved for use in patients with granulocytopenia. This medication may also be used to treat esophageal candidiasis. Caspofungin In clinical trials, caspofungin has potent bactericidal activity against congenita albicans and C. auris. However, it was found that higher concentrations of caspofungin were necessary to exert its fungicidal activity. Interestingly, it was also effective against methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus and multidrug-resistant Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Caspofungin is an echinocandin antifungal medication. It has a potent fungicidal effect, which is an important aspect of its use in treating congenita SPP. Its antifungal activity also extends to several molds. Further, it is safe and effective for most patients. As a result, it is one of the most popular antifungal medications today. Chitin is a component of the cell wall. Increased levels of chitin increase the uptake of echinocandins. Chitin increases cell wall rigidity and the ability to withstand intracellular turgor pressure. It is also thought to alter the balance of endocytic and exocytic processes. Hence, increased levels of endocytic vacuolization and resistant yeast could result in caspofungin resistance. Mycofungin, caspofungin, and triazoles, these three antifungal medications have different mechanisms of action and are effective against a wide variety of fungal species. Mycofungin and caspofungin have additive antifungal activity against congenita species and aspergillus. Mycofungin, caspofungin and triazole inhibit glucan synthesis in the fungal cell. Usually given through the vein, intravenous or 4, in a hospital setting, this antifungal medication is used to treat serious fungal infections, including candidemia, a bloodstream infection with congenita. Other congenital fungal treatments Other congenital fungal treatments include amphotericin B, fluconazole, and voriconazole. Among other antifungals, these are effective against congenita. Listed below are some of the most common ones. If you're not sure which one to choose, read on to learn more about these drugs. Also, check out our helpful guide to congenita to find out which is right for you. We also have detailed information on the benefits and risks of each type of treatment. Fluconazole In vitro studies have demonstrated that fluconazole has fungicidal activity against C. albicans. In one study, fluconazole significantly reduced the number of organisms within sterilized chambers. 
This suggests that fluconazole may be an effective treatment for chronic fungal infections. It may also be effective at preventing fungal cells from proliferating and generating younger cells. The American Type Culture Collection has maintained a strain of C. albicans by subculturing the organism on Saberod's dextrose agar slants over a period of years. Cells were scraped from the slants after three days and washed three times with normal saline. The result was an isolate that tested positive for fluconazole. Fluconazole is an antifungal agent in the triazole family. It is an antifungal that inhibits the demethylation of carbohydrates and lipids. It is effective against conjugate species, but it has limited microbiologic and clinical activity against endemic fungi. Moreover, it is not as effective against Cryptococcus species and C. cruzium. Its side effects are rare, but it may have an impact on your quality of life. In addition to affecting the immune system, fluconazole can also interact with a variety of other medications. Fluconazole may affect other medicines in your system, including certain vitamins and herbal products. Therefore, it is important to discuss your medical history with your healthcare provider before starting a fluconazole treatment. While fluconazole is generally a safe and effective treatment for conjugate, it should be noted that it may not be effective against viral infections. You can choose from a variety of strengths of fluconazole. These strengths are either 50 mg, 150 mg, or 200 mg. Choose a dose that works for you and is convenient for you. Fluconazole capsules are a convenient way to treat various infections. They are available in a variety of strengths, depending on the severity of the infection. Take the capsules as directed by your doctor and swallow them with water. Amphotericin B Amphotericin B is one of the most widely used antifungal drugs for the treatment of conjugate albicans infections. This antifungal drug has shown high antifungal activity and has several molecular mechanisms that explain its potency. Fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy has been used to investigate its mode of toxic activity. Ambassador binds to cells and aggregates with a short fluorescence lifetime, making it a particularly effective drug against budding cells. Amphotericin B and caspofungin are effective antifungal drugs. One study looked at the results of amphotericin B versus caspofungin in patients with invasive candidiasis. Amphotericin B was more effective than caspofungin, but it had lower success rates. However, the difference between the two treatments was similar once adjusted for neutropenia and Cochrane mantle heme cell scores. Amphotericin B is still a standard treatment for fungal infections, although it is considered the most potent antifungal agent of the past 60 years. Amphotericin B is an intravenous drug and is used only in patients with a life-threatening fungal infection who are unable to tolerate alternative antifungal medications. However, lipid-based formulations of amphotericin B have improved their tolerability. Various studies show that amphotericin B is effective against various fungi, such as Cryptococcus neoformans. But some patients have reported toxicity, which prevents the drug from working properly. The drug may also lead to the spread of infections, resulting in a failure of therapy. This can limit its use in developing countries. But the drug remains a valuable treatment option for many patients. Voriconazole Voriconazole has shown promising results in the treatment of serious fungal infections. The drug is most commonly used for the treatment of aspergillosis, which affects the lungs, but can also affect other organs. It is a potent antifungal agent and can cause serious side effects, including liver, kidney, and heart rhythm problems. It may also cause a serious blood disorder called porphyria, an inherited condition in which the immune system is weakened. The primary concern with voriconazole is that it may interact with other medicines, including herbal and complementary medicines. The best time to take voriconazole is at least one hour before or two hours after meals. This drug belongs to the phenylpropanes class of organic compounds with a phenylpropane moiety. Voriconazole is not compatible with many types of medicine. In an EC study, treatment was initiated without a loading dose of voriconazole. The MIT efficacy analyzes included 17 patients with confirmed conjugate infection. Nine patients were younger than two years of age, and eight were between 12 and 18 years old. A successful global response was defined as the clinical cure, presumed eradication, or improvement. However, the study authors do not recommend a loading dose of voriconazole for patients with liver disease. 
While both amphotericin B and voriconazole have their own side effects, they are both effective for the treatment of aspergillosis and conjuda SPP. It can also reduce the incidence of febrile neutropenia, which is common in patients with aspergillosis. Both drugs can be switched to oral therapy if necessary. They also have low cost. Posaconazole Posaconazole has shown promising activity against emerging pathogens and filamentous fungi in vitro. Its MIC90 values are considerably higher than those of fluconazole and voriconazole. Despite its broad spectrum of activity, Ambassador remains the most potent agent against zygomycetes. Table 4 shows its antifungal activity against various fungi that may contribute to the development of candidiasis. Posaconazole is available as a delayed release tablet or oral suspension. The latter is typically taken with a meal and is not recommended for use at night. Both forms of the medication should be taken with food and both may be used in combination with a nutritional supplement or acidic carbonated drink. In general, these drugs are not advisable to be given to children and should not be shared with others. The safety profile of posaconazole is not known. A high percentage of patients discontinued treatment for no apparent reason, while the rate of premature discontinuation was also high. However, it was still found that the drug reduced mortality. Its NNT for a single death was 33. It is possible that the difference in posaconazole serum concentrations among the different groups of patients is due to the variation in bioavailability. The patients who received posaconazole had significantly lower mortality rates compared with the control group. In a recent study, a randomized study of 500 immunocompromised patients with graft versus host disease compared to posaconazole and placebo groups showed that posaconazole reduced the incidence of IFI in a dose-dependent manner. It was significantly more effective than a single antifungal agent in treating the infection and was similar to its monotherapies in terms of mortality. Itraconazole You may be wondering if itraconazole is a good treatment for conjuda. It has been shown to be effective in the treatment of this fungal infection. However, you should be aware that it may interact with other medicines, including herbal and complementary treatments. Always read the product leaflet before starting treatment with itraconazole. There are also certain side effects associated with this medication. Itraconazole has side effects and is not always recommended for all patients. The drug may not be suitable for people with AIDS or porphyria. Several other drugs should be tried first before deciding on a specific treatment for your specific condition. One study showed that itraconazole reduced the incidence of histoplasmosis by 95% in HIV patients who had chronic opportunistic infections. Itraconazole is administered as liquid medicine, normally taken once a day. For best results, you should take the medicine after meals. A course of treatment may last anywhere from a day to several months, depending on your condition. It is important to continue taking the medication as directed to make sure the infection is completely cleared. Despite its side effects, it is worth considering for treatment. If you stop treatment early, you risk having a recurrence of the infection. Itraconazole is an antifungal medication that works to treat a wide range of fungus infections. It can be used on skin, nails, and in a variety of other ways. However, it is not advisable for those with heart failure, liver disease, or other medical conditions. Additionally, it must be taken according to a physician's prescription. As with any medication, you should always allow at least 12 hours between each dose. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if this was helpful.